that's a big change, right? From being able to get at least some insurance to not being able to get any is like a, kind of a big deal. Today, we are going to be speaking with Tammy Taylor from Biznet Insurance. She is an insurance broker here in the sisters market. Okay, so <laughs> Miss Tamara Taylor, you are a legend here in the sisters area. Insurance broker. A lot of people know who you are. You've been in the business a long time. And uh, so we're here to talk today about what is happening in the insurance market as it relates to just real estate, home coverage, um, and what's kind of what's changing with the, you know, the, the latest circumstances with sort of the economic factors that are going on. Um, we also have an ever evolving situation with the climate crisis, and that's kind of impacting the insurance um, industry as well. So if you want to go ahead and take it away and in introduce yourself and let's get into it. Sure. So I'm Tammy Taylor. I have been with Biznet Insurance. All right. So before we continue on with our conversation, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Community Give Back program. And I just want to talk to you briefly about what it is. So at the end of every transaction, I give back between 5 and 50% of my net income to the community. 20% of that is client directed, which is awesome. Uh, look at this, these two recent closings. Uh, we ended up writing a check to the NROTC and to, Animal, uh, to the Brightside Animal Center in Redmond. Those were client directed contributions to these community charities. The remaining 80% of charitable funds are directed by you my clients, the community, local artists, educators, charity volunteers, all of the stakeholders in our community have the opportunity to vote on where funds should go. So this is what's meant by the Community Give Back program. It's what's represented when you see this brand, the Give Back Realtor, a project that I care deeply about and hope that you will be part of. And with that, let's get back to the interview. It was first full heart insurance. Then we were purchased by Biznet. So it's been a journey of about uh, 26 years now that I've been in Sisters. Uh, so I've seen a lot uh, come and go. And definitely this is the hardest, most challenging market that I have ever been a part of. Um, Whoa, I've never been in a situation... <laughs> yes. Um, I've never been quite in a situation when I just cannot find insurance for a certain property or that the insurance that I am finding is excluding wildfire. So, so that... is that, I mean, has anything really, has anything materially changed within, you know, the, the set of properties, or the areas that this would be like a new thing, or is this just... Is there other reasons that um, this is happening? It's not necessarily new. Um, insurance carriers have always used their own methodology of wildfire mapping and scoring. So the idea that insurance carriers are using the state fire map that was created is not true. They are not using that map. They can't use that map but they have been using their own maps and their own methodology for years. Um, and I believe what has kind of gotten them running scared is the two fires that we had over the mountains a couple years ago, the fires that always happen in California. And at the same time, we had the fire down in the Ashland Medford area. So I think that is what, prompted all of this and for them to really start looking more at the areas that are in forests that are in backed up to national forests, which unfortunately is the town of sisters. So, so what does that mean? I think that I mean, all so, had. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I'm, what I'm, where I'm getting at, what I want to kind of ask about is if they've been covering, you know, their based on their own plans for so many years, Right? Like people have been able to get coverage. Um, now it's not even that rates are like higher. It's from what it sounds like, it's like you can't even get it in some cases. Is that fair to say? Or is in it some just... cases, yes, in some yeah, cases so... that is very true. 
that's a big that's a big change, right? From being able to get at least some insurance to not being able to get any is like a, kind of a big deal. Um, but we'll get into like what that what that could translate to in terms of transactions, um, you know, real estate mm-hmm. transactions, because that's really where the rubber meets the road when we're transacting this property that is in some cases uninsurable or underinsurable. Um, so Correct. that can be yeah, that can affect buyers' willingness to you know, get into a home and uh, it can introduce friction to a transaction that sellers were not even thinking about. This is very true. It's, I'm, I work with a lot of realtors and I'm trying to get out there that just, you know, please call an insurance agent. Um, I mean, we typically do have to have the personal information on the person that is looking at maybe putting an offer in on a home. Um, but it is, it's pretty easy for me to know where the location is, I can look at it. I can tell probably right away if I'm going to have issues with it or if I don't have issues with it, maybe what some of the obstacles would be or what we would need to do to overcome those obstacles. Can you walk me through like an example that you've had to do that with recently, like recently? Yeah. Or how has your yeah. workflow so today, changed? I just, I, uh, well... <laughs> Um, workflow has changed as far as I know kind of right off the bat where it's located. So the first thing I ask is what's the property address? So me, myself living in sisters, I know most of the areas. If I don't, I'll look it up on Zillow and find out where it's at. I will know right away. Am I going to have issues? Is it considered more of a high fire line scoring area, uh, Tollgate, Crossroads, Black Butte, those are the hot spots, so to say. Um, but it all depends. I had a realtor that called me this morning that buying a, a person wants to put an offer in on a home in Black Butte Ranch. My first question is, what's the occupancy? Is it their primary home or is it going to be a short-term vacation rental? That also makes a huge difference on where I can go. I'm also seeing that with the homes that I can do, I do have to have it as a package. So I have to have the autos included with the home. And that can be a challenge also. I mean, I can only imagine, right? Because now you're asking, it's like, hey, I wanted wanted to buy bananas, but hey, you've got to buy bananas, pineapples, and peaches all together. Like... And someone's probably, you know, I'm guessing there's clients that don't really want that dis- that disruptive of a change in their in their insurance products. Correct. So you're probably encountering that. Yeah. But there, so it's really interesting. You said that there's a That's difference cool. between being a primary residence, short term rental. This kind of gets at. It's like wow, there's a lot of options. You would never know this if you were, <laughs> if you were calling a number you saw on TV during a football game, right? Like one of those big box That's ads. That's it just. It, it's just, it's just, it's like, wow, these products are super nuanced. How do you, like, how does somebody, I mean, I guess that's what a broker is for. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Like the role of yeah. an insurance broker, as opposed to, I don't know, the big box insurance companies. Very true. Very true. You know, the big box, you know, your 1-800, you know, toll free numbers, you know, for them, they really don't know the area. Um, I have had some scenarios where somebody has called me, they were dealing with a 1-800 number, or they were dealing with possibly an agent from, you know, maybe Washington or outside of Oregon. That happens. Um, And I try and tell people, you know, I live and work here, so I know the area. I also know what I can portray or as an insurance agent, I have to paint a picture or tell a story to my carrier or to my underwriter. When I am here and I can go, you know, a few minutes down the road and go take pictures of a house and maybe they have done a bunch of tree trimming, they've taken the trees out, all of that. Your 800 number person is not going to know that. They are not even going to know how to ask those questions. Um, I have a very good rapport with the fire chief at Sisters Camp Sherman. You know, if we need a letter from him, I can reach out to him. I have that assistance also. So 
my having that experience, having that at my disposal, that can help me tell that story or paint that picture to my carrier or to my underwriter to try to get an approval. Not everything is black and white with some of my carriers. Some carriers, they are. They're very black and white. They're within their square box. Some of my carriers are not, and they want to know a little bit about the property. So if I can tell that and try and get an approval, that is 10 times better than not going through that process. Right. I mean, it's it gives a little more context to everything and um, provides right. more details. It, 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 I'm, I'm curious to ask, what do you see the trend has been? Like, is it is it getting to be more black and white in these in these current, you know, this current environment? Or is it is it becoming more nuanced to where there is still products available, but it's just you know, there's some more matchmaking that has to happen? Yes, there, there's definitely carriers that used to look outside the square box um, that are not anymore, that they just look at a, they look on Google Maps. And if there are trees around the property, then it is not something they want to take on. Um, I have others that, That's crazy, man. you know, their methodology <laughs> that they use, it immediately declines it. So wait, say that again. I have, uh, I have other carriers that all I have to do is put an address through and it will immediately decline it. So, but I do have a few carriers left that they're wanting to still write business in Oregon. They are open for business. So there's, there's two kind of things going on. I have some of my carriers that have basically said, we are taking a pause on new business where I have a few other carriers that have said we are open for business in Oregon, but it's got to be clean and defensible space has to be there and it has to be a package. So I have to have, what, is, what, is, what does that mean? Business. Defensible space. What, what do you mean by that? So they are typically looking at, they want defensible space up to they want a hundred feet, which some kind sometimes can be, sometimes cannot, depends on where you live. So they do not want big trees within a hundred feet of the home. They don't want a tree right up against the house where the limbs are hanging over the roof. That's a big no no. So Got they it. don't want that. And that is very hard because Sisters is deemed Tree City USA. This is what we live in. So, you know, I do have some of those carriers that are very strict on the defensible space, but I do have a couple of carriers that they are still okay with it, but there's a couple of other caveats that need to be met that it has to be within a a thousand feet of a fire hydrant. So there's also that. So wow. when so I this do is, get a new this is property, really revolving around the fire risk of sisters. This is really revolving around Yes. Like you're saying, the proximity to the Shoots National Forest, and even though we're literally hundreds of miles away from other fires, I mean, I I can yep. I remember hearing rumblings before that because of the wildfires and mudslides and the things happening in California, that you know there's the insurance companies uh, are needing needed to make good on a lot of claims, and so of course they, that spread is a pool of there's a pool of capital, which is all the premiums that we all pay for protection is being strained. Yes. Um, and so they had to raise rates. And then you can, now we have the fires within Oregon. And in addition to that, we have, you know, I happen to know that insurance companies tend to be very conservative in their investments, right? Like their, mm -hmm. their job is yes. to have money in the event that people need it because of emergencies. It's like Chris Rock mm -hmm. would say, it's the in case shit happens, right? Like you're paying for insurance in <laughs> case something happens. Um, but yes. in increasingly those investments that these insurance companies are relying on, have relied on that have been safe for decades. I'm talking like corporate real estate, you know, municipal bonds, treasury bonds, these like really slow, just keep the money safe. Well, the bond market has crashed 50%. You know, there's, there's talk of the commercial real estate market having a little bit of a difficult time. And so I, I'm, mm -hmm. do you happen, do you know if, if any of that sort of, 
financial market, sort of macroeconomic environment is is trickling into the decisions that are being made by these insurance companies to accept new coverage or or in some cases just raise rates, I, right? You're hearing about that too, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, you know, some are, are raising, I honestly wish that they would just raise the rates, just rate for the risk. I've been saying this for months, just rate for the risk. But there is also, there's a ceiling to that. I... I just had one the other day that I quoted. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to run it through this carrier and see what it is. Well, I quoted the home at 1.75 million. The premium was $110,000. Uh, I can't, you, for, I mean, it wouldn't for, have gone for, through. For someone like me, I think I know what premium is, right? <laughs> I think, but that's such mm -hmm. a big number that I'm not sure that I understand it. Um, <laughs> maybe you could, maybe you can explain <laughs> it to those of us that like, what, what would that mean? Like as a, as a buyer, like you're gonna you're gonna meet with me and tell me that I have to pay an extra hundred something thousand dollars for a policy <laughs> over over what a year five yeah. years like or no wait tell yeah, me that was that was a year now unfortunately they wouldn't have taken it because of, due to the wildfire scoring but it gave me a number so I have to be very careful to say okay just wait for the risk wait a second well, so you're telling that me mean? that for a one point seven million dollar home. That if they would have insured it, it would have cost roughly eight to ten thousand dollars a month extra to cover that house. Yeah. yeah, this is this is just one carrier. Keep I that know, in mind. But that's that's pretty so, exorbitant. I mean, you're paying a, it is and, <laughs> you're and basically it, paying five percent of the value of the home in a year in insurance. Right. Right. Yeah, that's pretty. Wild. So I do have to be very careful when I say, "We'll just wait for the risk." Well. There's got to be, but you have to understand too, the Oregon Department of Insurance is who approves all of this. For your name brand carriers that are all admitted, okay, all your state farms, your farmers, your Safecos, your travelers, those are all considered admitted carriers. The Department of Insurance is the one who approves the rates. So okay. when you are getting a rate increase, that has been approved by the Oregon Department of Insurance. So there's a couple of, you can't just blame the carrier. The carrier threw that number out there or a percentage and the Department of Insurance allowed that. So, but, uh, so here's that my mind. question, I guess, is how does that fly? Because if, if the prices are so expensive, I mean, I guess you have to have insurance if you're having a mortgage, right? You have to have the lender is going to require insurance, right? If you're if you're borrowing, Correct. so yes. So th this is uh, okay. So you have to have insurance even if it is exorbitantly high, because you have a third mm -hmm. party, which is you know another factor going into the onslaught that is you know the lending market for real estate because not only are our interest rates relatively astronomical yeah. to what they were two and a half years ago. But right. in our environment, I mean, this is a city by city, but in our environment being close to the forest, right. In this beautiful paradise that is the foot of the cascades. Well now, because of that, mm -hmm. we have to pay a premium in insurance if you are lending. So um, mm -hmm. it sounds to me like that's another reason that cash is going to be a thing. We're going to see people liquidating holdings yeah. rather than borrowing yeah. because it's just not viable. Correct. And are you, are yes. you seeing that in your deals? Seeing, yes. Yes, okay. I am seeing that. I'm definitely seeing, you know, the people that are coming to us now are not the, they don't tend to be now the, the first time home buyers. Um, they are, I don't see a lot of homes that I'm doing the binder, the evidence of insurance to the mortgage company because they just can't afford it right now. The ones that I'm seeing that I'm working with a lot, it is a, it's a cash deal. They've, they're paying cash for it. They've sold the home. It's a 1035 exchange, you know, something like that to where they're paying cash for the home. So they don't have to pay mortgage because they just can't, they just can't afford it. For, but, but does that mean that they're, they're like going commando and like not having insurance at all in some cases? Like are people are people still buying uh, homes that they can't insure, or is that like a reason to back out of the deal? Are you what are you finding? 
that's a reason to back out of a deal. I have, I have one right now that the only carrier that I could find excluded wildfire on the policy. It's like, so it's like it's like buying a, it's like buying yeah. a hamburger, and they give you the bun, the cheese, the pickles, the lettuce, the mustard, the ketchup, and they say <laughs> we're going to hold back the beef. <laughs> like that's. Right. Right. How are you going to, yeah. I mean, so, so you get covered for, uh, the water ex- bursting in the walls or something, but you don't get covered for yeah. fire. It just, if there's a wildfire and it burns the house down, then there would be no coverage. But if there was a kitchen fire, um, you know, weight of snow and ice, you know, an ice dam, you know, anything like that, it would still be covered. But I don't think these people wanted to take that risk. Um, And they've backed out at this point. Um, And I think what I want to try to get through to realtors and and to people is there's so many reasons why a house is becoming uninsurable or having to go to these special markets. You know, this one case that I'm talking about, unfortunately, they were six miles from a fire station. That puts them in the highest protection class that you can be in. That's a that's big. So that affects the premium. That affects the wildfire scoring. All of that. So when you, you say know, it's the highest protection within, class, does that mean that mm-hmm. that being at that so, distance requires the most amount of resources in order to protect that home in the event of an emergency? Correct. Okay. Correct. correct. Yep. So ISO comes out and they do their protection class ratings and they will do their ratings on the fire station. So it's all depends on how much water the fire station can haul, um, the response time, um, their apparatuses, you know, what they have. Uh, There's a lot that goes into it. Um, And it's usually if you're within five miles, you get that lower protection class. So sisters camp Sherman is a protection class three. As soon as you go over that five mile mark, it's now protection class 10 which is the highest. So there's a lot that goes into it. So, and you, and what people also need to real realize and understand is that these carriers are evolving every month. So house that I can insure two months ago or a year ago or two years ago, I may not be able to insure today. So does that come back or is that just just like a one way street? Is this a one-way street or does it – like assuming that you know, there's cowbell again and money is – is you know, they deal with the bond market and the investments are good. Like are the insurance companies going to be willing to write these policies at that point or is this like a one-way street? I, I mean I hope so. Right now I'm not hearing that. Um, Got it. I'm not hearing that it's going to get any better at this point. Um, mm-hmm. I hope it does. I think it's going to depend on what the summer, our upcoming summer does and the wildfires that are going to be in the Northwest. I think that is going to project all of this. And, you know, also we're going into an election year. That makes a difference. All of this is going to come into it. So, So, I mean, I, I definitely, yeah, there's a lot of like, kind of bogeys on the horizon you know like you mentioned you mentioned fire season right is, are we going to be three or five yes. because we've had fires the three out of the last five years or some you know some number like this and so are we going to be you know four for six if that if that ratio then starts to look pretty bad but then then there's yeah. also you know I, I was in california for a time and up in north of the north of san francisco was fire zone calistoga that whole corridor and um it was devastating and people moved back and at some point private insurance would not cover it. So the state had to step in right. and, and allow people to do that. And I'm wondering like, what's the, what does the future hold for this? These, you know, this issue here in Oregon and, and then like mm-hmm. what can people on both sides of a real estate transaction, right? Cause this is, this is adding friction into the, the real estate market, major friction and in, yep. in, in, in in some cases, it may even be like, like catastrophic freezing effect. Like people may not move to our town because 
Correct. They can't get insurance or because it's so expensive that they're just like, forget it. We're going to stay in the city or we're going to stay, we're going to move to a bigger area where it's all level three instead of level 10. So yeah. Can you speak to that? What is the roadmap? Let's start with what is the, what does the future hold for this issue in Oregon? I mean, I wish I knew. Okay. Um, but I don't, um, like I said, I don't, I don't see it getting better. I honestly, I, what I feel is I honestly think these carriers are kind of waiting to see what next year, what is going to happen with the fire season next year. I honestly do. Um, so it's a wait and I see, but it's still changing every, you said it's still changing every month, it's right? So changing. correct. So I know that uh, there's a big carrier, um, uh, basically is not riding in California for the next two years. Um, they were in Oregon. We referred a lot of business to that carrier. And about a month ago, they really started fire line scoring and they are not writing a lot of stuff that they were able to write a month ago. So, you know, and that just happened. So that was at the end, you know, after fire season that they made that decision. Um, I, I I wish I knew what is going to happen. I, I just don't. I, I are there any you clues know, it's very from like previous cycles? Are there any clues from previous cycles about you know, or is it just that we're just I, like in a new era of climate? You know, acts of God, catastrophes. I and... honestly think it's a, it's a new era. I mean, as as long as I've been doing insurance, I have not seen this okay. happen. You know, I went through, you know, when the, when the construction trades, you know, 2007, 2008, I went through that, but it's nothing like it is right now. Um, you know, to be affecting the personal side of it between the auto insurance, your homeowner's insurance. Um, I have never been in a market like this, so it's extremely challenging, um, I know for realtors, for mortgage brokers, extremely challenging because it's, you know, it's between, are you going to sell something or you're not going to sell something? It's uh, so, but it is so kind of, there's so many caveats that go into it. So, you know, I just try to ask, I'm here to help. So it's like I said, it's, it's pretty easy for me to know the area and where I have those problem areas. And that's where I want to work with, try to work with the realtors and, you know, try and say, you know, are we going to have an issue? Are we not going to have an issue? You know, I am now seeing realtors that are putting in a contingency on whether or not you can get insurance on a contract. So, this is, I mean, this is a really good segue been- into like, okay, we, we, we've kind of like covered what the state of the world is, which is it's changing. <laughs> it's getting more expensive. It's getting a little bit more tricky. There's a lot more nuance. You probably should work with a real, with mm-hmm. an insurance broker who can help you navigate it. So we know that piece, mm-hmm. but now it's like, okay, let's, let's speak to, you know, let's speak to the homeowner that's out there. That's been here for 15 years, 10 years, doesn't matter. And now they're thinking about maybe yeah. downsizing, right? They're, they're living in Black Butte Ranch and they're thinking about downsizing. Yeah. They don't want to do that split level 80s style home anymore, right? They want to move to a mm-hmm. single story. They want to move to town. Mm-hmm. What should they be thinking about as they're kind of percolating on the sales being, you know, what issue should they consider as in regards to insurability, you know, what they can fetch in yeah. the market? Can you speak to that, please? Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, so definitely, you know, defensible space. Um, that's a huge one. You know, even if you're looking at a property that, you know, that maybe, you know, it needs to be cleaned up or something like that. Look into that going, we're going to have to do this. Um, look at a home that is within a thousand feet of a fire hydrant. That makes a huge difference for me. I have a lot more carriers that I have access to if you are within a thousand feet of a fire hydrant. Um, and then the other would be, are you within five miles of a full-time fire station? 
So we do have a couple of fire stations that are within the fi- Camp, uh, Sisters Camp Sherman area, but they are not full time. They're volunteer, so that does not count. So yeah, I think that's what I would. Oh, another I could speak of roof, the roofs. So if it is a composition roof, I most of my carriers it has to be twenty years or newer. So or they won't even write. if you go out there and, you, and correct. Yeah, yep. I have one company that has to be 15 years or newer. So, so just to be clear what this means, because, like, yeah, I just, let me just, I, I want to see if I understand what you're saying. So I have a client who we're going to list their house and we, I always get a pre-listing inspection done. So I bring out my inspector, mm-hmm. he goes in, he looks at the roof and he says, guys, this roof is beautiful. It's in such great condition. <laughs> Um, wow, you've really kept it up. And how old is it again? And I go, oh, it's 21 years. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter is what you're saying. It doesn't matter that it is in great condition. If it's more than 20 years, insurance is going to be a problem. I'm probably going to have issues. I'm probably going to have so issues. So in that yep. case, the seller is going to have to either stomach it and re- do a new roof or it would be, be ready to issue a credit to the buyer to be able to, to get insurance. Um, yep. Got it. Yeah. So the other thing that I have to do is there's a difference between architectural comp- composition shingles and three tab composition. Wow. Most you're, carriers you're now. You're my mind. Do I don't even know what want. that means. Can you tell me what yep. that means? So I, I did look it up <laughs> because okay. so three tab composition is just a little less. Um, in material, it's less expensive when you're looking at replacing a roof. Um, an architecture, they look, they look pretty much the same. Um, but an architectural composition, composition shingle roof, it's more material. Um, it is more heavy duty. It's a little bit more expensive, but that is what the insurance carriers are looking for. So, so if you're is, looking to don't, replace don't them. skimp on your roof, right? There's, there's like, no. what's happened what, with this is, uh, homeowners, like what this means is when you're budgeting in for making that renovation, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it's, it's not about how far you can get with the dollars. It's about doing the right things. Uh, when it mm-hmm. comes to this new world of insurance, because otherwise it's going right. to, it's going to tag you when you go to sell your home, the resaleability just won't be there because now the buyer yes. is going to have to assume the risk or it's going to have to assume the state. I mean, it's very similar to like getting things permitted, right? And like people didn't want to, don't want to do that sometimes yeah. because it's a hassle and it's expensive and it can change your taxes, right. but it can be mm-hmm. a nightmare when you go to sell your home and you don't have all of your ducks in a row. Um, so this is just now kind yeah. of a new thing that's in that vein of where you just need to be aware of it. So, so yeah. you were you were mentioning before that buyers um, should be looking for homes that have you know are within a thousand feet of a fire hydrant. Um, mm-hmm. you have, maybe look for maybe look for homes that are defensible, maybe that are located close to the close to a fire station. Um, Mm-hmm. What what else what else should a buyer be thinking about and or the buyer's agent really should be aware of for their client? Those I just know are the hot points for me. Okay. Um, you know, there's definitely you know certain areas you know that there's just those certain areas that I know that are the areas that are harder for me because they are within the trees. You know, I do have, there is a carrier that I work with that they very much approved a new development that's being built in sisters because they felt that it was in within sisters proper. So it's right within the city limits. So even though there were trees and there are some trees left in this development, this carrier said we're okay with it because it is so close to the highway and it's within sisters proper. So that is another consideration. I mean, that's in the, in the long term, if, if this, you know, if, if, if this whole 
insurability question doesn't cripple the real estate market and we adapt to it maybe by i don't know being assessed and adding a bunch more fire hydrants you know in black butte and here <laughs> if we can get through if we can get through this period and and and, and emerge in the new world in a way where our real estate market can thrive, this still limits uh, limits supply over the long term because now there's no incentive for a developer to buy a plot of land, you know, right, from the state in the forest and try to make more houses because this is this issue is going to be waiting for you. Um, mm-hmm. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, I think it is. Um, and like I said, it just all depends on you know, where it's at. I mean, you know, they're really going to look at, you know, are there, you know, are there fire hydrants are, you know, that's becoming a big, a big issue right now. Um, and fortunately, you know, where we live in sisters, you know, not everybody has fire hydrants. Um, and that is definitely a little harder, you know, property for me to take a look at. Um, so, you know, I can say too, you know, you also want to look at, you know, composition, metal roofs are fantastic. Insurance companies love metal roofs. Um, would that, would you know, that matter if you're psych- still in, would that matter if you're still in say like the six mile from the. It, it does, but like I said, I can try and paint that picture and if it's got really good defensible space then I might be able to sell it. Right. So, so it's, it, 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 what, what you're saying is that like the decision the underwriter's decision is like a ton of variables, most of which we probably can't even list here that they're looking at. It can be right. Like yes. a metal roof. And if there's a, you know, a shower outside and you know, it has <laughs> this kind of tree versus that kind of tree or who knows? Like there could be yes. all sorts of different things that go into whether an un, whether an insurance underwriter says, you know what, we'll take it. Uh, so it's not a guarantee. A metal, the gist is a metal roof is not a guarantee, or nor is any particular feature yeah. of the property. It's like yeah. the whole property Correct. together. Got it. So yeah. can, can we talk a little bit about? I'm a realtor in town. Um, what? How, when should I be engaging with you on both sides? Like for my buyers, when do I bring you in? Because you know a lot more about this, and you always will. This is your bread and butter. Uh, to yeah. be that voice of reason, to be that advisor for my clients, uh, you know, as buyers or as sellers. When do I call you? I, I would right away. Okay. I mean, <laughs> okay. If you have if you have clients that are, hey, we want to put an offer in on this house. Call me. Call me because if I can flat out tell you that there is, there is nothing I can do or that it's going to be a situation where, yeah, I can get coverage for it, but it's going to exclude wildfire. Well, you're going to know, you're going to have to go back to your, your clients and say, well, if you're paying cash, then this, we might be okay with this. But if they're looking at getting a loan, that's not going to fly. Um, so, like I said, it's very easy for me to know the area, know where my challenges are going to be, and relay that to you as the realtor so that you can relay that back to your client. I only okay. need a certain amount of information. Um, you know, I do need the customer to call me because I need some of their personal information. Yeah, but that's a I would rather do it. Like that is a client relationship with you anyway. Right. There's just like with a lender yes. there, there, that is a client, that's a confidential relationship that, um, you know, that Correct. I don't have. And, and, um, you guys Correct. can talk about whatever private things you guys need to, um, yep. Yeah. But at least I can, if there, and I do have some realtors now currently that will call me and say, we want to go under contract on this house. You know, can you take a look at it and tell me if there's going to be any issues? Absolutely. I'm more than happy to do that. I would rather do it in the beginning than not be in a huge rush. I just had one the other day that the guy needed the binder to the mortgage the next day. There was nothing I could do. Wow. I mean, why get to that point? That's terrible. Yeah. You know, so I'd rather help you out in the beginning and not have any surprises at the very end. And then you can't close the deal or it can't close escrow because of something like this. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely always tell my, my clients, like 
when we get into contract, it is a milestone, but we are so far from close. And especially with issues like this, <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. uh, so on the buyer side, I'll say, oh, you know, what you could expect from me is to reach out early to be mm-hmm. sure that we get a contingency for insurability if we're mm-hmm. asking, you know, if we're, if it's kind of within the realm of that's a risk. And then the other thing is, which, you know, maybe you've seen this, but, uh, and this affects the seller is there's probably a discount in the event that insurance is not easy on the property. Like this mm-hmm. affects the value. Do you have it? Have you had a sense about if the buyer is even willing to take it on? It does mm-hmm. it, this end up amounting to like a 3% discount, 5%, 10 is it, is it totally vary based on the house? But is there a cost associated yeah, with not being able to insure? On the house, you know, I don't know how you would even, you know, and I think that that's probably why it's even better to start the conversation before you put an offer in on a house, because if you know there are going to be issues or, you know, I can say the roof is going to be an issue or the defensible space is going to be an issue. They know then what to take, or even if it's a buyer, you know, if I have somebody that maybe is wanting to list their house, that would be a great time to call me. If I'm, if they're a current client, then that's easy enough, you know, but if they're not a current client to say, you really need to assess your current property, you know, is you need to expect if the roof is going to be an issue then you probably better write that in because somebody's going to probably either ask for that to be covered or vice versa. You know, the defensible space, there's cost for that. So it it just all depends. So do, does the insurance company, the I mean, do you get like a list back that says why they won't insure it? And is there a recourse? Can I, if, if it's no. like, you can't. It's just like a yay or nay, but it's not like nay, but if you change it's the roof yay. and you cut the trees and we would look at it no. again. Okay. Um, there's some. So like I said, I do have some of my carriers that are very black and white. It, it's a flat decline. It's just, it is a, it's due to the wildfire scoring. They're not going to take it. It does not matter what I try and tell them about the property, it is it is not going to change their mind. I have another carrier that basically says, this has to be referred to underwriting due to wildfire scores. Okay? So now here's where I need to try and paint my yeah. picture, tell my story. Why? I basically need to say, why does this carrier want to insure this house? Why do they want it? And I'm going to try my best to sell it and if those if there are those issues the roof the defensible space i need to put in there hey this person's going to replace the roof they're going to cut down these trees i'll go out and get pictures all of that and then i have to send it in and then i have to see what the underwriter would say so i do have those scenarios where there are those carriers that they'll try and work with me but i know what they're going to ask, I know what they're going to decline. So I'll go from the get-go and say, this is what you're going to have to do. I know they're going to decline it if you don't fix these things or replace this. Got it. Wow, crazy world. And can you believe (laughs) that we've been on this call for 45 minutes? Wow. Uh, We're going to have to to wind it. There's a lot to say. It's a big topic. Um, Yes. Do you have any, uh, before we, before we kind of wind it down, do do you, you know, you want to share your contact information or um, where people can find you and all of that? Yeah. Sure. So um, I'm at Biznet Insurance. I have a direct line. It's 541-904-6006. Uh, my email is ttaylor at biznet.com. So it's B-I-S-N-E-T-T dot com. And like I said, I'm here to help. Um, you know, I, I understand, you know, it's my livelihood. It's your livelihood. 
whatever I can do to help a realtor out, a mortgage, an escrow, you know, anybody in this field, we're all in this together. And if there's anything that I can do to try to help the process or make it easier, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for joining me on the call. Um, Like I said, there's definitely probably a lot more we could go into, but this is, this is probably a good first chunk. Um, Did you have any questions for me at all? Or did you, No, no, you've, you've covered quite a bit and cool. it's, it's good to know that, you know, what you're doing on your end, which is fantastic. I wish all realtors would do that, you know, kind of do your due diligence in the beginning, you know, yep. don't have any surprises. That's what I can honestly say. Cool. Well, thank you guys. For, if you guys are still here, um, thank you guys for watching Real Estate Industry Chats. With me, Stephen Saunders, the Give Back Realtor with Avenue Realty. And today with our special guest, Tamara Taylor from BizNet Insurance. We are both located in Sisters. So if you are thinking about moving to the Central Oregon market, we both cover Sisters, Redmond, Bend, Camp Sherman, Black Butte Ranch, all these amazing paradise places um, that are just spectacular uh, they are they become an immediate favorite family destination for those that come out here. So give us a call back, keep mm-hmm. in touch, and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Okay, thank you. As always, I'm Steven Saunders, the Give Back Realtor with Avenir Realty. Hope you have a great one.